Well, here's the finished CAD model of the piano. 11 copies of the 8 key assembly for the full 88 note range, a single full length plexiglass window to view the hammer action through, and the rest of the covers printed in black PTG. On the left side, we have the housing for the rest of the hardware necessary to control the key press signals and convert it to actual sound, which I will cover now. Originally, I planned on using a Raspberry Pi with an attached DAC in order to run some sort of a VST, but in the end, I decided to go with a mini PC running Windows attached to a touchscreen at the front here. I'm like 95% sure that I'll end up using Pianotech as the VST, and using a, a full mini PC will allow me to attach a second larger touchscreen to use as a display for sheet music without needing a separate computer. The screen itself uh, grew from 7 inches to 10 inches when I realized that the Pianotech uh, doesn't have a good low resolution UI option. So navigating it with a 7 inch screen was a pain in the ass. Underneath the touch screen I managed to fit in the FIO K11 DAC. I wanted to use a shit Magni but those are quite expensive to get in Canada so... The rest of the space is taken up by the two USB uh, hubs and the mini PC itself, while the entire uh, backside is taken up by, well, the power units. There's two power bricks, uh, one for the DAC and the other for the mini PC, along with two uh, power boards for 5 and 3.3 volts respectively. A set of uh, WAGO connectors uh, for the main voltages tie everything together, allowing powering up via two buttons at the front. Uh, one is for the uh, PC, while the other one toggles the 5 and 3.3 uh, volt power supplies that power the sensors. In terms of connectivity, at the front I have a breakout for a single uh, micro SD card that I'll use to automatically record all the session play data in MIDI format and a USB connection for a USB stick or something. In the back, uh, we'll need to show the rest of it, I guess, is the main breakout board. I didn't bother uh, modeling all the connectors in CAD, so let's go over them in real life. So here's the left side panel, fully assembled IRL. As I already mentioned, we have the touchscreen here, and at the front, we have the DAC, power buttons, um, SD card slot, and USB. In the side, you can see the mess of cabling and uh, power supplies and all the rest of it in the back. Uh, all of these connectors I can't really get in uh, any shorter than one to two foot lengths. So all the, well, cables had to uh, go somewhere and I'm not splicing them because, I mean, they're USB 3 cables, so I have no idea what would happen if I tried that. Anyway, along the back, we have the rest of the connectors. We have the secondary touchscreen monitor that will connect via HDMI and USB here. We have the four extra USB connectors that can be used for keyboard, microphone, camera, and whatever else. The Ethernet port right here is left as a just in case. Personally, I'll connect the PC via Wi Fi, but who knows? Better to have the option and not use it than not need it, or I guess need it in the future and have to redesign the backplate and wiring. The power connector is self-explanatory and the middle section here will be for the uh, MIDI connection straight from the sensor boards. We have the standard MIDI in, MIDI out, and USB-based MIDI on the off chance you wanna connect to a different PC instead of the built-in one. At the top, we have the three sound connections, audio left, right, and digital out from the DAC. And right next to them, we have the pedal connections, one for the single pedal unit, like the one I have on my Korg piano, uh, the other one for the three pedal unit that I haven't yet bought. The pedal and MIDI connections are currently either disconnected or missing entirely, but that's because I haven't yet uh, put together the control board that will talk to the uh, sensor boards, pedals, and MIDI. At the moment, I'm just using uh, this sort of a breakout board uh, or breadboard uh, to talk to the sensor boards and pedals. Uh, the outputs are going into a MIDI 
uh, jack like so and uh, connecting via MIDI to a USB adapter and then going into one of these USB ports in the back. The knobs in this particular unit are used to fine tune the velocity profiles along with the LED colors. But in the final version, once I get around to it, there's going to be this uh, port in the top with a uh, four line LCD display and a rotary encoder that I'm gonna use to um, set up all of these uh, velocity curves and all of the rest of it uh, internally without a need for anything else. The last thing I wanna cover is this dial in the side. I managed to fit in an entire planetary gearbox in here, which should make adjusting the key weights uh, easier. As you can see, uh, the down weight of the keys can be adjusted from uh, 30 grams to 90 grams. So if someone, aka me, prefers a lighter or heavier feel, I can set it accordingly. And that pretty much concludes the design portion of this DIY piano series. Uh, throughout the last seven episodes, I've covered uh, the Yanko layout, the mechanical action, the key sensors, and the control system. So the next videos will shift focus onto the actual assembly. Uh, this episode did turn out to be rather short though, right? I know. Uh, I'll just play something on the eight key prototype uh, through Pianotech on this control unit. It's a bit of a mess of wires in the back, and I've only got the eight keys to work with, starting from A, giving me A, B, C sharp, D, and E on the A major scale to work with. But hey, I'm sure I can figure out a short piece to end this video on. I know, uh, this should sound familiar. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching and until next time.